Right, so uh, it's cold, chilly workshop. We've been spending some time mapping it out, and we've having stoned off the front verticals, held a parallel against that, then put a T square against that, and then check that that face and that face, which are if you like above. But they're, they're original machine faces. I was stone them off as well. As far as I can tell, they're at 90 degrees to the verticals, which is handy. So I'm using these as the faces to date them, that face and that face, so that I can basically set the those guideways up so the ram is at 90 degrees to the vertical face in its action, as opposed to traveling along and either diving down or going up um, I haven't worked out how I'm supposed to check for doing that that's a well that's a that's another problem um, so I, I guess what I could do is put a, a round dowel in there and then measure from that dowel surface back to this machine surface and work on the basis of that being the square uh, yeah that's probably what I'll do so uh, having then used a depth gauge span this with a um, parallel drop depth gauge down the lowest point is this these are just figures in thou below the top of the they're just a uh, it's just a figure uh, so basically I've got two and a half thou here to nothing here. So the, if for intents and purposes, that that section there has got to come down two and a half thou. Uh, that section's one thou. I've written them on the top here so I don't lose them. So I've got to take nothing off other than a, you know, a couple of tenths just to give me a scraped surface here. To half a thou, half a thou, half uh, a thou 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 half a thou and back to nothing there uh, and then it's pretty much duplicated here albeit there's been less wear on this face so i've got uh one and a half thou to come off this bit a thou i think that's right i need to check that one again uh a thou one and a half two thou uh, I think that was two, two and a half thou. So, it, for intents and purposes, this is the side that's had all the wear on it. So it's got the least material to take off. This is a side that's had less wear on it, so it's got more material to take off. The idea is to bring them, bring these two faces down to parallel, then uh, progressively step scraping out from the inside. To the outside um, once I've got them so that I can't measure it with a depth gauge then I'll set up a DTI and start running it and chasing down to two tenths then I'll start using the uh, straight edge to print it that's the plan I'll come I'll bring you back in a month so that's about 20 minutes work working it in I had a DTI running along it and it's within half a thou, so it's plus or minus quarter of a thou, which is basically the depth of the grooves. I believe you can average it by sticking a, a Joe block on and then zeroing and then moving along. But uh, given I've got to print it, I don't see a huge amount of advantage. Um, I was trying to stone it with this, which is a sort of very thin diamond stone. It's supposed to be a thousand grit. Um, it's leaving some god awful scratches down so it looks like I'm in the market for getting a knife edge stone I have nothing thin enough to get under the corner so that might halt play for a bit and anyway, while I'm here I'm going to uh, bring this one down to parallel and then uh, I've got to work out a datum which is the same height as that on this side and then I can zero my DTI to this side and run it backwards and forwards it's a bit of a pain but there we go
so basically I take that position relative to the top of the um, parallel and I shift it across and I find a sim another position somewhere on here which gives me just a, a, a datum and then I can reset the uh, jig up to read me the same datum but without the pissing about with the parallel because you can see it's prone to slip off and it weighs about two kilos and goes down with a bit of a thump and going off hands whereas the the other one will sit on there a bit more comfortable so we've got a datum there a datum within a tenth of that there and we're within we're around about two and a half and between five and seven tenths out so I'm going to go over this, give it some smaller cuts rather than the heavier. Bring it down and then uh, probably look at getting the print. I've got to do something about this area yet, but that's, that's lower than this anyway. I think. <laughs> yeah, that's took, uh, well it's one o'clock, it's took two and a half hours just to rough it down. A um, bit of a trouble trying to get in at this angle. I could really do with turning the whole unit so I can go at it from either side. Uh, but this face really wants attacking from that side and in those two directions. Whereas I need ax better access and uh, it isn't very good. Anyway, it's lunch time. Well, well, I made a bit of a mess printing, but uh, I tried with the ram first just to give me an idea and got pick up there and there which are the two low points according to the measurements so i then pulled out the straight edge again took a light printing got a repeat put a heavier ink on and you can see i've got pick up there pick up there but nothing here now when i'm measuring it across from here to there all of this area should still be a third of a thou higher than that area so I have no idea what's going on. Uh, I then took a print on this section just to see and it's picked up there and it's picked up there but nothing in the middle. And then on the far side it's picked up on that section but the parallel only really runs along this section which has got splatterings of ink across it and the printing along this side is a bit more there's a bit more of it along so I'm just wondering whether this section here which I'm sitting the parallel on is actually not even well <laughs> it's it's, it's no, of no use to me which is why I wanted to do wanted a two foot uh, t-square so that I could set it up off the front parallel front verticals and then use some feeler gauges down to check where I was at um, I haven't got one and can't afford to buy one. I don't know anybody that lend lend me one. So I'm scratching my head now trying to work out what's going on. So this is what we're getting now. Um, been at it about an hour and a half. Scrape down the far side where the gib sits. I'm drop trying to drop that down without tilting it, so that I get a a ninety here. I don't know how effective that's going to be until I've got it in, but you can clearly see that this section's lower. And the way I'm printing it is I'm sticking the rest that the straight edge along this edge here and bringing it down so at the end of the straight edge finishes here. So I've got a two, three inch overhang this end and I'm moving it a quarter of an inch. My, my thoughts being less movement will result in less tip and then what I'm doing is I'm not taking off this section I'm just taking off everything that side thinking that if it you know as it's as we're looking down the end view of it if you can imagine the base of the straight edge goes on here rests and then I'm quarter of an inch backwards and forwards and what I'm trying to do is not get that kind of face but that 
So by leaving that position and taking everything this side of it down, I should get it, start to get a progressively heavier print here as this material's dropped down. Worst case scenario, I end up that way around rather than that way around. But I'm deal with that when it happens. I've got a lot to take off still because uh, that was a quite a heavy inking to show to give me a decent print now. Yeah, frustrating that. It's probably much of that material I've taken off didn't need to come off. Maybe I don't know, or maybe more did. Who knows? Slightly heavy inking, but pretty good coverage. Still a little light this front corner. That's the opposing scrape over the last one. Just breaking up the blue. And then we do the same exercise on that, that side. Got a lovely print near side. And then on the far side, nice and even, but only three quarters of the depth. Oh, that bit. And all along the back edge of there, no contact. How went well? Well, I say none. There's possibly a couple of little bits. So, looking at the printed surface, that's the edge that goes under the dovetail. I don't know what that was. But I'm guessing it's had some shit go under it. So, we're going to clean it off and reprint without touching anything. So I haven't cleaned it off, re-inked it, you can still see a mark. So, it's kind of like spot the, spot the part that's causing it. It's a better print, got more contact further in. But there is obviously, there's obviously obviously something in there which is causing that scrape mark. Like those dark areas need dropping, but it should be on the near edge. Anyways, it's getting close to lunchtime, Mother's Day. This is the front corner of the uh, the way, and you can see this edge fades in and out. Now it's possible that when I was initially scraping some clearance into the back, I got a bit overly zealous and took out a thou or two. Let's tell the face. So that's the Gibbs side. You can see the, uh, the bare spot right at the very back. So I either keep dropping both faces down 
or we call it a day or not. I can't believe it's going to make a huge deal of difference. So that would put that diagonal face in as the next one to go after. Anyway, I've been on it pretty much all day, so that's just six or seven hours. I am for a bit of lunch and a walk of the dog. And I have to say, humping that ram left backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and gently placing it in position and gently moving it backwards and forwards and gently lifting it off and trying not to smear too much. That's tiring. You can still see that bare spot at the back. Give it another hour's going over and it ain't changing a huge amount. I'm going to give it one heavy scrape each side. Short strokes, trying to take some material down, just trying to lower the surface. Because it, if I look there, there you go, it's focused. Uh, the gap between the end of the blue and the end of the dovetail is about an eighth. And then there's three sixteenths to a quarter. So it's variable. So I'm pretty sure it's where I uh, dragged the scraper along at the back, trying to actually cut it off the um, bottom of the, dove, of the dovetail angled face. And I think what I've done is I've scraped off the flat surface. Fool of a man! So give it another scrape and uh, yeah, see how much my arms ache after that. So I just sampled it. 16, 16, 20, 15, 18. That's going as far under as I can reach, but also it's pretty much covering everything. And then on the near side, it's 26, 23, 25, 19, 20. Now on the, the RAM that I printed it off, I would have said the ink distribution is pretty similar. So this near side's got, in my view, far too little contact area. So we're going to still need to refine it all. We've got to increase the uh, contact points on that side in terms of the number. And we've got to increase the size of them on this side and we can drop a few for what it is. We're aiming for 20 so we're not a million miles off but yeah. Getting a bit fed up of it now. <laughs>